So you can see I was going off of that fender, the second gen Dodge dually fender. So you can see the curve here, comes down, out, rolls around. That's what this one does. This one's got a bigger curve to it and a way bigger roll. But considering the shape of the car and how squared off the car is, I didn't think that, that big of a roll would make any sense. So the next step I'm gonna take on this, well, you can see, let me show you up close here. So this curve rolls around. You can see the curve in it. So I wanted this curve up here and this is gonna weld to the rod and then get ground down so I'll have a flat, a flat spot all the way around the whole thing. But um, I needed that curve in there just to give it a little bit extra um, flow, I guess. I don't know. Just a little bit more detail. And it's not that much harder to just put the curve in it instead of just going straight to the rod up here. But look, I mean, it just looks great. It's good. So the cap is done. Finally got it on. Looks real good. Give you a view from back here. So it looks. So what we're gonna do, and also I ended it here for a reason. That's because that body line that runs around the factory body line, I wanted to stay with that. Comes around and dives down right here. Just stay with it and then it rolls around. We got that line right there in the fender and we're pretty close to starting on the other side. You'll see a lot of these hanging around which are just templates for the pieces that are already made. I keep those so that when I uh, cut out the other side, it's the same. So that piece goes right here. And then I can just cut this out of the metal and um, take a contour gauge and make this same shape. See, I've got to go down, over, back down to here. So I'm going to get this uh, where you see that, that cut. I'm going to weld all this together so that the top and the, the, uh, the side here are one piece. And then I'm, I have to take this back off of the bottom and get that rod that is still in there out. Which is that rod right there. That rod's gonna come out. That rod is actually tack welded to the bottom section of this uh, dually fender. But once I get this off, I can go and dolly it all out. This seam right here needs to be English wheeled. And again, the English wheel is this guy here. This one, again, you take a flat piece of metal, it gives you a curve. And kind of a curve this way too. So it gives you contours on both sides. Then you got a shrinker and st a stretcher. That's a stretching, or I'm sorry, a shrink. So that makes, it brings the metal together. This pushes it out. And then this is the uh, plunging hammer. Those are all just, you know, Harbor Freight tools. If I had really expensive ones, I don't think there'd be any kind of difference. So anybody can do stuff like this with cheap tools. I mean, you can, if you know how to do it. You can learn, it's easy. So, and then I have all these pipes laying around and that one there and this one here, that one, one there, one inside of it. And they all have brackets, just scrap metal brackets welded to them. And I use these to bend these shapes, these, these curves, you know, a tighter curve here, wider curve for the outside. You know, you don't want a square corner and just weld two pieces together. You want it to make, to look like it was a, uh, you know, something from the factory. So factory's not gonna go square everything out. I mean, they do on the door, you know, 
the corners, but even this is kind of rounded. It's not a sharp break. So I just make a bunch of different jigs for different size stuff. Really small here. Um, and so on. But it's coming along pretty good. So I'm gonna go and cut this thing apart now and oh, weld it up. And then comes the other side, which I'm not excited about at all, but it's gotta happen. It's gotta happen. Look, there's nothing, nothing here. Okay, so I've got these cuts in here because um, I had too much English and that's, that's just too much roll, too much curve in this area so i had to get some of that out of there but this whole thing's already welded on so this i just made a relief cut and that's what that is there's one there and actually one over here too relief cuts this one little tiny one there that's just where these two pieces of metal came together so this is one piece and all of that is one piece also and then there was a seam here that will end up being dollied out so I'm going to take this whole thing off once this is all welded up and ground down. I'm going to take it all off and uh, dolly it out. And then weld it back on and cut the door open. And the, the lip here, it's all welded on. You can see you got to keep it in line with that inside one, this inside lip here. So if you look around, it's in line with it. As you go around, get back over here. I don't know, this thing's not focusing. There we go. You can see it in there, it's in line. So that way, our panel that's actually a plastic piece, it's not metal, but it's gonna go. Well, I might, I don't know, I might make a metal piece that gets bolted in. That'll look pretty cool. But it'll go all the way up and around and back down the other side and close off that gap. So, I make these separate because I'm used to cutting the wheel wells and raising wheel well arches already on all these cars. You can see that one's raised up. I mean, you can't see, but it's probably, it was probably somewhere down here and we raised it up. The reason why we do that is because we drop these cars really low on the ground. We don't want to cover the wheel. We don't want it to look like it's slammed where the wheel is tucked up into the body. So I'm used to doing that anyways. And um, this one had to be made, and it's got a curve on it, a lip. It curves out right here. Let's see it. You can see how it curves out. It's got a lip. So that had to be made separate and then be put on.
has got to be one of my favorite shirts that uh, Demolition Ranch has. This is the one with the uh, flag on the back, the eagle. Love it. Can't find it though. I need to definitely need another one. So I think that was a pretty long time lapse. Try to make it as short as possible of all the things that we've done since the last video. And uh, it's coming, it's coming along pretty good, as you can see. Fender's all cleaned up, and this is going to get a coat of primer on it. I just ran out of gas when I was welding these up. I got to make a pass with a couple welds here and there. Um, doing a double weld here, two of them really close together, and you can see. There's a door gap there, so that's why I did that. I need this weld and that weld to hold uh, each part while I cut this all the way open. So that's the next thing that I have to do is cut this open so I can make a, a door piece. Now the other thing that I was doing too is, uh, you saw in there, I was cutting this out. So this is obviously where the door handle goes. and. Um, let me explain that. So when I cut the hole out of here you know, on the door itself, I'm going to put the round stock. So the round stock is, is this stuff here. It's round. Focus in. You can see it's just solid round bar. I just noticed I have a crack right through the center of my screen. Solid round bar. This is what's going to um, go around the hole that I cut in the door. And that's just to strengthen it up. I need that hole there because this is going to sit inside that hole. The reason why is because, you know, we're not too fat right here. It's not very fat. This is about the thickness of that. You can kind of see. Once we get that hole cut in here, no, yeah, once we get the hole cut out, we're going to weld that piece in, put the door handle in, and yes, we are going with CUDA door handles, not the VET handle. That was like a 50-50 thing. A lot of people said VET handles, and a lot of people said CUDA handles. In the end, it's not the matter. So, he's going to end up going with CUDA handles because it is, after all, CUDA. I thought that maybe the VET door handles would look pretty good uh, sitting in here, and I was right. They would. It really would, but we're not going to go that direction. Overall, I'd probably not go with the door handle at all because it looks really good and clean and smooth. I'll give you a view from this direction. See how nice it looks. Big fat fender. It came out so good. I'm so happy with it. All the way down. Got a nice curve here, here, you can see. And on top of that, there's also a lip on it now, like the front, because the front you can't even see, but the back has got a nice, nice lip on it. Now, of course, the hardest part is making the other side. I don't know for anybody else out there who does fabrication, but making the other side is always the worst thing ever. Now, I'm probably not going to film that entire process. I might do kind of like a time lapse thing on it because, you know, I've already seen this whole thing go. I'm gonna try to do it as fast as possible and it takes a lot of time setting up the camera, you know, doing that whole thing. So I'm gonna try to blast through it so we can have two fenders. And then that means the next thing we do is we go get an axle and get it chopped and, and uh, shortened and get that thing in here. And there is not much to do on the back half of this car. Um, we, once the, the, the dually fenders are done, all we gotta do is finish the floor. The trunk floor. So, moving up front. So up front, I put Tony on the core support. And everything you see primed in here, little primer pieces, not metal. Uh, the primer pieces is what Tony made. So this is a core support. This bolts up to the front and body mounts. Okay. There will be... Um, a roll bar that comes through about right there somewhere, goes up along the bottom of this fender, 
so that we can have clips that come out and I'm sorry, not clips, tabs that come out and grab the the bolt holes for the fender. And then it'll dive down at an angle, probably a 45 degree, and come right through here and in here. So this piece in here that he made, oddly enough, um, the shape of it is actually supposed to be a square, but it looks really cool like this because it goes over, up, angles out, a lot like the bird on the demo flag. You notice the bird's wings, the shape, see that top piece right here, the top of the bird? It looks a lot like what Tony did. I don't know if that was on purpose or not. Good job, Tony. That's what we're, and there's still a bar that goes all the way across right here. This is just to hold the fenders up because there's nothing to hold the fenders up yet. Um, so a bar is going to go across here and it connects our latch support for when the hood comes down. Which, by the way, the hood is going to be bad. Uh, it's going to be awesome. So what we're going to do is the, the hood's going to have a cowl, a big cowl. And that's just, uh, you know, the hump on the, on the hood. Anyways, a cowl. But that cowl is going to be shaped just like the top of the dually fender. So it's gonna mimic the dually fender. So like from here, if you look, you can see the dually fender. It goes up and then it curves around the other way. So it's got a nice long curve in it. Dang, that thing's fat. So you got this side, and then we got the factory side. Weak. So when we're looking at the hood, we'll have the cowl start here, roll up this way, and then back around down to the back to clear the header. The same as the fender, it rolls up and then back down around to the back. So it'll do that, up on this side, up on this side, spread out, and then come back around and meet at the back of the hood. It's gonna be really cool. We don't really need a giant hood because a lot of the stuff is gonna clear just fine. Well, obviously, not that header piece, but I'm just going to walk around and show you this again because it looks so good. David, David from SIE Power. You know, bad ass manifold. God, I'm going to have to keep up with that when I do the rest of the, the work, but and then we got the motor that's almost done. Obviously, if you guys want to go check out um, Holden Brothers Diesel, their YouTube channel, they got a video of Matt's motor being built. And um, it's pretty intense. It's, it's the best thing I've ever seen. They got some good stuff coming up. Holden Brothers YouTube channel. Holden Brothers Diesel. Uh, and then, of course, check out Demolition Ranch. Uh, off the ranch with Matt and he is he's why all this stuff is happening in the first place and the guys here at the shop everybody gets to have a part in building this crazy crazy car the next thing coming up and I'm gonna try to post it as soon as possible and I'm sorry these videos might take a long time to come out but it does take a long time to do this kind of stuff so I it doesn't happen overnight the next one I'm, I'm gonna post up is actually cutting this door open and once it's cut open, then I'm done. I move to the other side. I'm so excited about that. You, you don't even know. When the body comes off this frame, that's when you know we're, we're getting really, really close to this thing starting up, being extremely loud, and breaking a lot of stuff. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love making these videos, it's, 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 it's very fun to do. And I'm gonna try to keep uh, you guys updated on everything else that's going on in the shop. I can probably only do one of those a month, unfortunately, because um, aside from all the different cars coming in, the cars we build, um, they don't, obviously the restorations don't go fast, so. But either way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to keep you guys updated. Um, our t-shirts are finally here. Go to bunkerbranding.com, then search Muscle Rod Shop. And if y'all want a shirt, you can. You can get one. 
And uh, if you do, thank you for supporting us, by the way. Thanks for watching, and y'all have a good day.